Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And a nice one out there today. There was a weak cold front that moved through, so that kept our temperatures down a bit. But look at this beautiful shot from our Billy Goat SkyFi Tower camera. High above the towns of Pateras and Brewster. At the bottom of your screen, you can just see where the Methow River joins the Columbia River and some high clouds up north. And we saw plenty of that here as well. And as we take a look at our forecast through the weekend, yeah, we're going to see warmer temperatures, especially tomorrow on Saturday and Sunday as well. The only caveat about Saturday and Sunday, lots of clouds and about a 20% chance that we could see some very scattered showers. We'll talk much more well weather coming up for you a little bit later on. Now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Governor Jay Inslee signed three gun bills yesterday that were passed by the legislature this year. Short-term rental codes adopted by Chelan County last summer must be revisited because the county adopted them without appropriate notice to the public. And the rate of new COVID-19 cases in Chelan and Douglas counties has fallen to a level not seen before since the emergence of the Delta variant of the virus. But first, our top story tonight. A Quincy teen was shot and killed late last night and police have located a vehicle believed to have been used by the suspect but have not yet made an arrest. The Quincy Police Department said officers were called to Quincy Valley Medical Center at 11.40 p.m. where an 18-year-old man had been pronounced dead from a gunshot wound. Police said the victim had been driven to the hospital by a friend who told them the shooting had taken place by the old junior high school in the 400 block of C Street Southeast. A dark-colored passenger car had been seen leaving the area that was later located by officers. Anyone with information on the shooting is being asked to contact Detective Jaslyn Silva at 509-787-4718. Governor Jay Inslee signed three gun bills on Wednesday that were passed by the legislature this year. Those bills include a ban on gun magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, a prohibition on firearms in public places like school board meetings and voting centers, and a ban on so-called ghost guns. Inslee signed the bills in a ceremony with anti-gun activists. And I am proud of our state to be a state who is willing to take the lead to stand up against the NRA to stand up for common sense gun safety legislation. And today we're saying that we are proud of communities who are fighting against gun violence, and we're proud that our state will now take further action today against gun violence. And the reason is simple. We are not willing to accept gun violence as a normal part of life in the state of Washington. And we will not allow this scourge of gun violence to wash across our state without taking action. Today, I'm proud to say we're taking action against gun violence. Short-term rental codes adopted by Chelan County last summer must be revisited because the county adopted them without appropriate notice to the public. The Washington Growth Management Board ruled today that the county mischaracterized a substantial change in the draft code as a Scrivener's error. That change required existing operators of vacation rental homes to immediately comply with rules on occupancy, noise, insurance, and other issues, rather than giving them a grace period of up to one year. The Growth Management Board now says that change was substantial enough to require public notice and comment before county commissioners voted on the ordinance. The short-term rental rules remain in force, but Chelan County now has until September 26th to meet the public notice requirements. Well, the rate of new COVID-19 cases in Chelan and Douglas counties has fallen to a level not seen since before the emergence of the Delta variant of the virus. The Chelan Douglas Health District said as of Tuesday, the rate of new cases was at 124 per 100,000 residents over the previous two weeks. Back in January, that rate surged to more than 3,000 new cases per 100,000 residents. The health district continues to offer free COVID-19 testing at the Town Toyota Center. 
COVID hospitalizations also continue to decline, and for the first time in months, there are currently no COVID-19 patients being treated in Central Washington Hospital's intensive care unit. Overall, there were seven COVID-19 patients at the hospital as of yesterday. Well, when we come back, Alaska Airlines announced the phasing out of the Q400 prop, prop plane, which serves Pangborn Airport. Our Valley, Our Future has released its latest action plan. Family Health Centers of North Central Washington earned a leadership award this week from a statewide health organization. And Icicle Center for the Arts in Leavenworth hires a new director. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. The best pizza in the known universe is right here in downtown Chelan, so come on up. For the best locally crafted beer and barbecue in Chelan, come on up. For the best down-home scratch country cooking in North Central Washington, you'll find it in Manson. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Welcome back. In another news, Alaska Airlines announced today it will stop flying the Bombardier Q400 prop aircraft that serves Pangborn Memorial Airport by the end of 2023. Right now, Alaska flies the Q400 in and out of Pangborn four times daily, as well as Pullman, Walla Walla, and Yakima. The airline plans to shift all of its regional flights to the smaller Embraer 175 twin jet. How that will affect passenger air traffic through Pangborn remains to be seen. The airport recently began a $17 million project to widen its taxiways specifically to accommodate the Q400. Airport manager Trent Moyer said today that those runways should work just as well for the E-175. The Community Vision Association, Our Future, released its new five-year action plan during a Wednesday luncheon at Pibus Public Market. More than 2,000 community members contributed input to help create 86 local improvement projects, which the group hopes to push forward through 2026. About 81 nonprofits, businesses, and government agencies have pledged to champion those projects. Areas of emphasis include homelessness, sustainability, education, and wildfire preparedness. You can find a copy of the action plan at rvalleyyourfuture.org. Well, Family Health Centers of North Central Washington earned a leadership award this week from a statewide health organization. The Washington Rural Health Association recognized the nonprofit clinic network for leadership in innovative rural health care programs. CEO Jesus Hernandez accepted the award Tuesday. Family Health Centers was established in 1985 to serve patients and families in Okanagan County. It offers medical, dental, and other care to underserved communities throughout the region. Leavenworth's main facility for music and arts education has a new director. Philip Lacey has been named chief of the Icicle Creek Center for the Arts. He was previously executive director of Leavenworth Summer Theater, which he steered during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Arts Center board says Lacey was chosen after a wide-ranging search. 
Icicle Creek hosts concerts, films, plays, and summer retreats on its 13-acre campus, which also includes the Snowy Owl Theater and the Outdoor Meadow Stage. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. The 2022 Grant County Fair is excited to announce country supergroup Lone Star. They'll be playing at the fairgrounds Thursday, August 18th. Friday, August 19th, it's Cameron Marlowe. And on Wednesday, August 17th, it's the tribute bands Jukebox Heroes, Barracuda, and Stone in Love. Three of the premier tribute bands on the West Coast. The VIPC tickets go on sale March 11th. The Grant County Fair, August 16th through the 20th. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, NCW Life's Rachel Mandelis reintroduces us to Maya the dog. This week on Pause for Pets, Jenny Ulrich, the volunteer and outreach coordinator for the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, introduces us to Maya. This is Maya. Um, Maya is about five years old. She's been with us for a little while and kind of overlooked. She is just a fabulous dog. Um, she's super friendly with her people, um, pretty engaging. She's easy to walk on a leash. She has lived with other dogs, but she didn't do well in playgroup here, so we kind of think that Maya's looking to be the only dog in a home. She's a little slow at sometimes to warm up with new people, so as long as she just has an owner that's really into her and just making sure that she gets that time to like settle in and kind of slowly introduce other people, she'll be a really, really great dog. She is so sweet, so cute, and just waiting for her home. If you are interested in meeting and adopting Maya, the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., 2.30 p.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and 2.30 to 5 p.m. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at WenatcheeHumane.org. Take a look now at your North Central Washington weather forecast and not a bad Thursday out there today as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera up on Wenatchee Heights and we did see that persistent high cloud deck over us today. We have a ridge of high pressure over us but it's called a dirty ridge which allows clouds to actually move through it and that's what we've seen the last couple of days. Temperatures cooler too. A weak cold front moved through at the same time today. We'll talk more about that in a second but 57 our unofficial high temperature today. In fact, our high and low pretty much where we should be for this time of year. 55 is our normal high. 
36 our normal low temperature record high 75 beautiful degrees back in 1960 18 our record low back in 1964 by the way we got all the way up to 66 degrees yesterday so the temperature really climbed late afternoon yesterday sunrise this morning 655 and the sun sets for us tonight at 719 let's take a look now at what we can expect as far as temperatures go on Friday we will see warmer temperatures tomorrow Tomorrow, the cold front will move into Montana and the Dakotas. And yeah, we are back into the low 60s all over the map. Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, Ellensburg, and Wenatchee will all see 61 tomorrow. 60 for Kashmir and Eniat. The cool spot, Lake Wenatchee at 52. And the Omak, Okanagan, Tenasket area. Nice one for you folks, too. You'll see about 59 degrees. Taking a look at tonight, mostly cloudy skies. Here's an area of low pressure. Our high pressure ridge right here. It's kind of getting squeezed now by this area of low pressure, and that'll bring us some of those high cloud co cover conditions overnight tonight. For Friday, we'll call it partly cloudy. We'll see a good amount of sun for tomorrow. It will be warmer, too, as I mentioned, with high temperatures mainly in the low 60s. Here's that little bit of storminess, an area of low here and here, and they will move closer on Saturday, so that'll bring us a 20% chance, and they are going to be widely scattered showers for Saturday, partly to most cloudy with high temperatures beautiful once again into the lower 60s and a nice one for Sunday too I think we'll see a little bit thicker cloud deck on Sunday just some isolated showers around I think most of those will stay in western Washington with high temperatures again into the low 60s and by the time we get you into Monday to start our next work week off a little bit breezy as one storm system moves through high pressure begins to build once again right here just to the west of Washington State We'll see high temperatures Monday right around that 60 degree mark and getting into the end of our forecast by Tuesday. Yeah, our high pressure ridge flattens out. Area of low pressure will bring a strong westerly flow our way. We will see highs in the lower 60s, but then changes as we get into Wednesday with much cooler temperatures, a 20% chance of showers. High pressure will intensify, but on the back side of that, here's that storm system that could bring us just those scattered showers on Wednesday. Wednesday with high temperatures by then back down into the mid 50s. Take a look at that seven day forecast. 38 overnight tonight, 61s for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. As I mentioned, the only caveat Saturday and Sunday, about a 20% chance for scattered showers both days. Back to mostly sunny skies on Monday and breezy conditions. We'll see a high Monday of 60 degrees. Beautiful for Tuesday, mostly sunny and 62. And by the time we get to the end of our forecast Wednesday, once again, another weak storm system moves our way. Mostly cloudy. A 20% chance of rain with high temperatures around 56. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Spring is more than just a time to clean. It's your time to renew, recharge, and spend time with the people you love. At Mary Maids, our cleaning services go beyond the basic services and provide you with a comprehensive clean that will re-energize your home and enhance your life. From everyday routine cleaning or deep cleanings, Mary Maids professional team members can provide you with an unrivaled experience. Call Mary Maids to schedule your cleaning today. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. NCW Life really does a great job of exposing our brand. It's a little scary at first, right? You, you're just throwing money out there hoping it comes back. Uh, and to see those results come back through and see people walk through the door and say, hey, saw your, uh, saw your TV advertisement. Um, those are the kinds of things that you see the return on. And when you look at the cost spent, uh, you know you're making a return on it. There's a huge market here and market potential, and they are a great avenue for that. And now, it's a sports update 
on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Thursday to you. The old adage is that you want your team playing its best basketball come playoff time. Such is the case for the Washington State men's team right now. The Cougars turned a tight first half game into a blowout last night in Provo, downing BYU 77-58 in the quarterfinals of the NAT tournament. Michael Flowers was on fire, scoring 27 points and setting the Washington State single season three-point record in the process. Flowers back in the game and immediately shoots three. And Michael Flowers with the three. Look for Washington State trying to use the ball screens. Flowers, heat check. He's got two in a row. That one's three. It, he's being much more aggressive right now with the basketball when he's coming off the ball screen. Flowers inside, and Michael Flowers is starting to take over. The lead is just three. Ty Roberts nails a huge three. Jeff, maybe he hurt you. <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> Big shot by Tyrell Roberts. Athleticism and their relentlessness in going after every rebound. Flowers for three. Count it! Andy was fouled. And Michael Flowers is now the new single season three-point record holder for Washington State. That is a tough shot. <laughs> Flowers again. Another contested three. This one's good again. These two guards have put on a show for the last five minutes. Flowers turnaround intermediate jumper. Washington State is moving on to New York City. Yeah, great game last night. Deshaun Jackson came off the bench to score 14 points as Washington State's big men gave BYU fits all game. Coach Cal Smith says each win marks another milestone for the Cougar program. Uh, just an outstanding effort by our guys uh, and winning this environment against a really well coached, good team. Um, you know, the initial four minutes, I was very concerned because they came out with such an initial punch with Traor and Loner, and uh, we were able to withstand that and got some good efforts from Deshaun Jackson coming off the bench. And then Mike and Ty had a really strong second half and, and uh, really salted away the game. And, we were the prior season low for turnovers, I imagine, um, and just uh, played played our probably our best game of the year and our biggest game of the year. So that's that's really exciting. Flowers surpassed Clay Thompson for the single season three point record at Washington State. He says that's all fine, but he wants to win this tournament. Yeah, so this is something that you know everybody's been talking about lately and stuff, and um, you know it's an incredible accomplishment. But um, you know I'm obviously still trying to you know win this ring, um, you know win the whole thing. Um, but, you know, Clay Thompson, you know, that's an amazing shooter, one of the best shooters that the game has ever seen. And it's, um, you know, just nice to see my name next to his. So, um, you know, respect to Clay and, you know, let's keep going. <laughs> Washington State moves on to Madison Square Garden for the semifinals next Tuesday against Texas A&M. The game will start at 6.30 on ESPN2. Well, the Gonzaga men's basketball team set for the Sweet 16 at the NCAA Tournament today. The Zags are facing Arkansas and San Francisco. That game underway on CBS. Other games today feature Michigan and Villanova on TBS. Later games have Texas Tech facing Duke on CBS and Houston against Arizona on TBS. Now, the four games tomorrow have the 15th seeded St. Peter's uh, taking on Purdue at 409 on CBS. Providence plays Kansas at 429 on TBS. North Carolina and UCLA tip at 639 on CBS, while Iowa State and Miami face off at 659 on TBS. Sweet 16 round of the women's NCAA tournament begins tomorrow. North Carolina faces South Carolina at 4 on ESPN. Ohio State and Texas tip off at 4 as well on ESPN 2. Maryland and Stanford start at 630 on ESPN, while Creighton and Iowa State are on ESPN 2. Things resume bright and early Saturday for the ladies when Notre Dame and NC State face off at 8.30 in the morning on ESPN. That's followed by Indiana and UConn 11. Uh, Cashmere grad Haley Van Lith and her Louisville Cardinals meet Tennessee Saturday afternoon at 1 on ESPN 2. That's followed by South Dakota and Michigan at 3.30. Wenatchee Valley men's basketball team continues to prepare this week for the NWAC tournament semifinals. That's coming up Saturday. Knights will face Bellevue at 1 o'clock at Everett Community College. Winner will face the winner of Yakima Valley and Olympic Sunday at 1 for the and WAC championship. Well, Nancy Wild fought valiantly last night, but fell in the end to Penticton by a score of four to three. Garrett Sidlowski brought the partisan crowd to its feet in the first period on a shorthanded goal, but uh, put Wenatchee up 1-0 at the time. The two sides battled back and forth in the second, emerging with a 3-3 tie. Art Checker called the action on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Kate Stibby 
Shorthanded up on the far side, turns the corner on Hopkins. They were changing on the fly behind him, but he finds Sidlowski. He shoots and he scores! Garrett Sidlowski. The assist on it goes to Cade Stibby. Shorthanded goal for the Wild. And they lead it one to nothing, and the diapers and wipes are flying out of the ice. Into the right wing corner. Fired back up top. Doyle over the top of the far circle. Shot and a score. Touch pass from Emerson is for Lindler, but he gets turned over. In front, V shot, save, rebound, score. Luke Wilson on the backhand as the Wild turned it over. He's got Caffarelli in front. Waits, spins, shot, he scores! Oh, what a shot. That was beautiful from Landon Parker. Over to the right side, Hey Duke, tough angle. That shot is turned loose. In front, shot, score! Ian Samoza put on the rebound. The shot from a steep angle. Arnott again up top midpoint. Hopkins for the V's. V's back to Arnott. Sent down low. McDonald shoots and he scores. McDonald got left alone over to the right hand blocker side of Shea. He's on the right side. Curl and drag. He's in. Goes to the backhand shot and he scores. Oh, what a nice goal by Josh Nato. Emerson tried to chip it past. Samoza picks it up. He'll carry it down the right wing, but he's not going to be able to catch up to it before the horn sounds. And the Penticton V's are able to escape with a 4-3 victory. Besides Garrett Sidlowski, Landon Parker and Ian Samoza score goals for Wenatchee, but not enough. Wild now head north of the border to wrap up the regular season tomorrow at Trail and Saturday at Cranbrook. Checking the prep scoreboard and schedules presented by Les Schwab. First of all, in baseball yesterday, Lake Roosevelt topped Okanagan 7-6, while Omak tied Tanaska at 4-4. Today, Manson travels to Bridgeport. Uh, Efreda blanked West Valley of Spokane in softball yesterday 10-0, while Tanaska topped Liberty Bell. 6-5 today. Cascades hosting a doubleheader against Brewster. West Valley plays Wenatchee at Walla Walla Point Park in two games. Lake Roosevelt hosting Okanagan in a single contest. Boys soccer yesterday. Oh, actually the schedule for today. Cashmere plays at Omac. Chelan's hosting Quincy. Oroville's visiting Manson. Cascade traveling to Royal coming up at 6. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric, and go Zags today. Well, as we leave you tonight, a reminder. Drivers with studded tires on their vehicles have a week to get them off or face a fine. With no major weather systems in the forecast, an extension of the March 31st deadline for removing studded tires is unlikely to be extended. Anyone with studded tires on their vehicle after the deadline face a fine of up to $136. The Washington State Transportation Commission estimates that uh, studded tires do 20 to $29 million in damage to state highways each year. The commission says damage to city streets and county roads is million dollars more. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. On a Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we're going to get your weekend going with a great conversation with Jeremy Anders. The general manager of the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval, we're getting close to turning fast and driving left. Or is it driving fast and turning left? Jeremy will straighten that out. We'll talk WVSO, and we'll have a weekend weather forecast, and we'll also talk about Gonzaga basketball. Go Zags, beat them hogs. Wake up Wenatchee Valley live tomorrow morning from Studio 7 at 7 a.m. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that, that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. It has really um, been a great partnership between Succession and NCW Life. It's not always easy to sit in front of a, a camera or a, a microphone, but um, you guys have made it a really nice process. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life channel.
Watch Vibrant Living, brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Find out about programs and activities for ages 50 and over, and meet amazing seniors who contribute to our community. New episodes Sundays at 1.30 p.m., replayed throughout the week on the NCW Life Channel.